Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Bears Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So on today's deck tech, we've got Shurikai Genesis Engine, a fantastic commander with a ton of potential and a lot of fantastic avenues to victory. It is an 8-8 ledger artifact vehicle that can be your commander. Yeah, that piece of text at the bottom is very important because, well, let your artifact, uh, even if they are vehicles, cannot be your commander usually. Regardless, this one costs two white and a blue, and it has pay one, tap, draw two cards, and discard a card. Create a 1-1 one, one colorless pilot creature token with this creature crew's vehicles as though its power were two greater. So, that can really add up when you are trying to crew eight this vehicle. That's right. Your commander, again, is an 8-8, but only when it is an artifact creature, once it is crewed with those pilots and, uh, you know, other creatures as well, potentially. But yeah, those pilots are very efficient at doing so. So, this commander can provide you a lot of card advantage. Card selection as well. Again, draw to discard one, and it can be a token generating machine. There are, of course, plenty of ways to get the most out of this commander to make a massive army in absolutely no time to dig through our deck to take advantage of drawing and discarding cards and also uh, ways to ensure that we can smack our opponents with this giant mech robot, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, this is a fantastically exciting commander. And yes, on this episode, like my other deck decks, I'm going to be taking you through different tactics to show you how this deck works and how we're gonna win with it. Also, every single card in this deck, except for the commander, which is just over $1. Every other card is underneath $1. That's right, the entire 99, every card is less than $1. So it's a very budget-friendly deck. And also, if you are interested in this deck, make sure you check out that deck list link in the description below. Now, with all that said, let's jump into it. First up, of course, there's Wayfarer's Bobble. Pay two, tap, sacrifice, go get a basic land in the play tapped. Yeah, not a lot of ways to land ramp with these colors, but Wayfarer's Bobble is a fantastic one. Next up, we've got some great artifact ramp. That's right, some great mana rocks. Arcane Signet and Felwar Stone can tap for each of our colors. Well, at least Felwar Stone can do so most of the time. In Azoria Signet, pay one into it and tap for our guild's colors. Following that up, we've got some mana rocks that each cost two in tap for a color. So these are all very effective, very efficient mana rocks that have some additional flexibility to them. Local Melator can turn a non-land permanent into an artifact. Mind Stone can be sacrificed to draw a card. And Prismatic Lens can filter mana. Moving on, though, we do have some more artifacts that are very, very, very mana efficient. Marble Diamond, Sky Diamond, Entry Play tapped, but they do tap for one each again, so very efficient. Two for one. Speaking of two for one, Everflowing Chalice, the ultimate two for one mana rock. Multi Kicker, two. It's got Entry Battlefield that many charge counters on it, and it can tap for that much. So essentially, you're going to get half the amount of mana back that you put into this. So if you want to pay two, you're getting one. Pay four, get two, and so on and so forth. Yeah, later on the game, this can tap for a ton of mana. And uh, we do have ways to untap mana rocks and other things as well. We'll get to those here in a bit. Regardless, we also have some other mana rocks that are very effective and efficient. At three mana, we've got Coalition Relic. It can tap for one, or we can tap for a charge counter on it. And also kind of, you know, store up mana essentially for next time with that charge counter. Warren Power Stone, no need to store up things here. Enters the Battlefield tap, but taps for two. And then Victory Chimes, this only taps for one and it does cost three, so not that efficient but it does untap during every single player's untap step. So we essentially are getting four mana out of this with every trip around the table. And again, with a commander that has an ability that we can activate with this, that is fantastic, especially again, because we've got some ways to make the most out of our commander's ability and utilize it multiple times. And since we can utilize our commander's ability a ton, well, we can draw a lot of cards. So Decanter of Endless Water, it says you have no maximum hand size, which is fantastic. It does only tap for one mana, but again, giving us no maximum hand size is massive with this commander. Midnight Clock can help us out with our hand as well. It's going to get our counters on it, and once it gets the 12th hour counter on it, we shuffle our hand and graveyard into our library, then we draw seven cards and exile Midnight Clock. Dreamstone Hedron, another great mana rock. Cost six, temps for three, we can pay three to tap and sacrifice to draw three cards. We've got a lot of fantastic ways to ramp in this deck and make the most of our mana.
Moving on, like I mentioned before, we've got plenty of effective ways to utilize our commander's ability. Yeah, we've got a lot of ways to untap things, especially artifacts with Voltaic Servant. At the beginning of your end step, untap target artifacts. So we can untap our commander if we want to utilize that again, or again, maybe even untap one of our massive mana rocks. Stinging Lionfish. Whenever you catch your first spell during each opponent's turn, you can tap or untap target non-land permanent. That includes our commander, of course. So yeah, if we're casting spells on our opponent's turns, we get extra untaps to then, you know, dig further in our deck, make more pilots, etc. 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 Speaking of that, Chalk and Retriever. This one does partner. We don't care. But it says whenever you cast a spell during your turn, untap target creature. That is the important part. That is a fantastic part. Yes, we do need to have our commander crewed in order to take advantage of this. But when we do, we can take full advantage of it by just casting spell after spell after spell, untapping our commander again and again and again to fully utilize that ability on our turn. Speaking of which, we've got some very simple but very effective creatures that can help us out as well. Vizier of Tumbling Sands, Kelpie Guide, Clever Conjurer, each can tap to untap another target permanent. And yeah, our commander or our giant mana rocks, those will work too. But yeah, again, just being able to utilize our commander's ability a lot throughout the game with all these different effects can be huge. So of course, we're not done yet with untapping. Because next up, we've got Unbender Tine, an artifact that taps to untap another target permanent, including artifacts like our commander, Manifold Key. Pay one, tap, untap another target artifact, and we can also make a creature unblockable, which is uh, kind of crucial with our commander because our commander, well, has eight power and no evasion, but by giving it that, it's going to get through, smack an opponent for a ton. Again, our commander just inherently is a three hit KO. Good luck, opponent. Synod Artificer, a great one as well. Pay X, tap, tap, X target non creature artifacts, or pay X, tap, untap, X target non creature artifacts. This can be a massive boost for our big mana rocks and also a massive boost to be able to utilize our commander again. Or if we want to tap down our opponent's things, we can as well. We can also untap multiple things with Nimble Claw Adept. Tap to untap two other target permanents. We can only activate once each turn because. Well, uh, this would uh, be pretty broken if we could do this uh, with, you know, other things pretty easily. That's okay, though. Telekinetic Bonds. This is something that we can utilize multiple times on the same turn to a very, very, very potent effect. Whenever a player discards a card from their hand, that includes us. Pay one in a blue if you like. If you do, you tap or untap target permanent. So our commander can just be untapped again and again and again with this because again our commander is going to have us draw to discard one triggering this every single time so as long as we have the mana for it we can keep paying to untap our commander to keep drawing further making more pilots and yeah just having a great time digging through our deck and discarding cards Now, when it comes to untapping things, though, we've got some massive ways to untap our permanents with Dramatic Reversal and Energy Arc. Dramatic Reversal, just two mana, untap all non-land permanents you control. Again, we've got a ton of permanents that would like to tap. First of all, our commander, obviously. We have then all those fantastic mana rocks, including some really big ones. And then, of course, all those permanents that we just mentioned that might tap to maybe untap something else. This can be a giant boost to ensure that we can utilize all of our effects Again, Energy Arc, a bit more specific, but one that can be very effective in a lot of situations. Basically, untap any number of target creatures. We prevent all combat damage we dealt to and dealt by those creatures this turn for just two mana. So again, we can untap all those fantastic creatures that have tap abilities that we have, and that includes our commander again, if our commander is crewed and is a creature. We can also utilize this as a defensive measure too. It's kind of like a fog in a way as well, where if an opponent's swinging at us with their army, we're like, no. Those creatures aren't hitting. Thank you. So, yeah, there's a lot of cool things that we can do with a card like this and a lot of value we can get out of it. And speaking of getting a lot out of something, well, Psychosis Crawler is an incredible card for this deck. It's got power and toughness each equal number of cards in our hand, which again can be a massive amount. So this can be a big threat in and of itself. But more importantly, it says whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. Again, we're going to be drawing an absurd amount of cards, digging down into our deck again 
and again and again draining our opponents essentially every single time we activate our commander by two each which is again six life in total right in a game of commander with three opponents we can dig down very quickly drain our opponents incredibly quickly and take them out with this we can also make a massive army in absolutely no time with cards like ominous seas nadir kraken and chasm skulker ominous seas draw cards get counters on this by removing eight of those four shadow counters we get an eight eight so yeah huge creatures nadir kraken whenever you draw a card you can pay one if we do we get a counter on the kraken and a one one tentacle in a somewhat similar way there's chasm skulker whenever we're drawing a card we get a counter on chasm skulker if this dies we get x one one squid creature tokens with island walk where x is that number of counters so yeah different ways to build up you know different creatures you know going wide going big but our army can become quite deadly in absolutely no time of course we've got other ways to take advantage of our drawing and discarding as well though with min ethereal investigator and drake haven Min says whenever you draw your second card each turn you get a 1-1 one, one illusion that's going to get plus one plus zero for each other illusion you control so yeah those can become quite massive and on top of that whenever an illusion we control dies we can just put a permanent card with mana value less than or equal to its power from our hand directly onto the battlefield for free yeah we're going to be drawing a second card in well no, we can pretty much do it in every single turn once we're set up properly right with ways to untap our commander just activate once cool you hit that trigger great next turn untap our commander do it again and again and again yeah a lot of powerful plays with this ethereum investigator another way to benefit from our card draw as well when it enters the battlefield we investigate x times or x number of punts we have and also whenever you draw your second card each turn you get a one one white spirit creature token with flying so we can hit our opponents in the air as well speaking of which drake haven whenever you cycle or discard a card you can pay one if you do we make a two two drake with flying again every single time we activate our commander draw two discard one this triggers make that drake get your air force going and take out your opponents And of course, we can make all these creatures in our creature tokens even deadlier. And yeah, that includes our pilots as well. Intangible virtue, creature tokens you control get plus plus one and have vigilance. Now it would just take what? Two pilots essentially to crew our commander, right? Because they'd have two power each. Plus they get their additional, you know, boost for just for being a pilot essentially. So yeah, meet that eight power requirement for our crew cost quite easily and yeah you know what make our army even deadlier glorious anthem very simply just give our creatures plus one plus one again that can be a huge benefit in the trenches the exact same thing but we can also pay five and a white to exile a non-land permanent we don't control until this leaves the battlefield only as a sorcery only once but still a nice additional value just essentially stapled on to a glorious anthem and in an even bigger way we've got dictative heliod which we can flash in for a lovely surprise for opponents creatures you control get plus two plus two keep in mind that again our commander does have eight power and uh yeah if we get a couple of anthems in play including this one we can easily turn it into you know an 11 11 essentially and that is a two shot ko again on any player and uh yeah we can even turn that into a one shot ko once we get going with paladin class here we go spells your opponents cast during your turn cost one more to cast nice creature control plus one plus one again a great anthem and on top of that level three whenever you attack until end of turn target attack creature gets plus one plus one for each other tag creature and gains double strike so let's do the math okay our commander would be a nine nine thanks to level two if we attack with two creatures and then we attack with our commander as well then yeah that would be an 11 11 with double strike that is a one shot ko on any opponent does not matter how much life they have they are out of here so yeah dualist heritage can also help us out as well in a lot of scenarios whenever one or more creatures attack you may have targeted attacking creature gain double strike until end of turn so we can actually utilize this in a political way as well on our opponent's turns they're gonna swing at someone hey we can benefit you by making your creature hit even harder if you swing at someone else speaking of swinging levitation makes it a lot easier for us to get through especially with our commander a great enchantment creatures you control have flying so yeah now our mech is flying scary Now, as good as all these cards are that I mentioned so far, there is one, in my opinion, that stands above the rest, and that is the Golden Pig of this deck, which, of course, the number one card out of our 99. And the Golden Pig of this deck is Thought Reflection. An enchantment for four, blue, blue, blue. It says very simply, if you would draw a card, draw two cards instead. So, <laughs> oh, wow, uh, the math is quite easy here. So, uh, we activate our commander. Uh, we 
Instead of drawing two, we're going to draw four. Now, that doesn't change how much we're discarding, right? We only discard one card still. So instead of just basically netting one card of card advantage, we now net three, right? Because you're drawing four, only discarding one instead of half that amount. So yeah, an absolutely incredible card in this deck that pairs incredibly well again with a lot of things. Again, all those things that benefit from whenever we draw cards. This essentially can make them twice as effective. I mean, helps us dig through our deck even quicker, getting the right cards that we need for the situation that we're in gives us an absurd amount of value throughout the game and yeah it just makes our commander even more efficient even more effective every single time we activate it and again we're going to be activating it a lot with all those untap effects so yeah thought reflection in my opinion is definitely worthy of the title of golden pig of this deck now that being said we do have some other great cards that provide additional advantages for us like unctus grand meta tech it says other blue creatures you control have whenever this creature comes tapped draw a card then discard a card so yeah if our commander again is crude it is a blue creature it's going to become tapped quite a bit we're going to be getting some extra looting out of that on top of that other artifact creatures to control a plus plus one so a nice little additional benefit there rumor gatherer whenever another creature is battlefield you control scry one so again we're gonna have a lot of creature tokens entering the battlefield including the ones that our commander makes and on top of that if it's the second time this ability is this turn we draw a card instead we're going to be making a lot of tokens, drawing a lot from this, scrying a lot from this. Speaking of which, Mentor the Meek, whenever the creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under control, you can pay one. If you do, draw a card. Yeah, we're going to be getting that trigger quite a bit as well. But now that we've talked about our plan, let's talk about some ways to throw a wrench into our opponent's plans, like Crush Contraband. Hey, choose one or both. Most of the time, both. Exile target artifact, exile target enchantment. Return to Dust can also get rid of artifacts and enchantments as well by exiling them and dismantling wave. For each opponent, throw up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls. And if we need a panic button, we can cycle it away to destroy all artifacts and enchantments. Next up, we've got Oblation. The owner of target non-line permanent shovels into the library, then draws two cards. We can actually utilize this on one of our own permanents as well if we need to to draw some cards and dig deeper imprison the moon a great way to knock out a creature land or planeswalker because now it's just going to be a colorless land that can tap for a colorless and it loses all other card types and abilities aether gale a great efficient bounce spell five mana bounce six target non land permanents back to their owner's hands and then we've got curse of the swine yep time to turn all of your pawns creatures into pigs exile them and replace them with two two boars and then finally, we've got some board wipes that can help out as well. Dusk, destroy all creatures with power three or greater. Again, if our commander is not crude, it's going to dodge this. And then Dawn, yeah, we've got some creatures we can get back with it as well. Austere Command, a very flexible board wipe. Choose two artifacts, enchantments, small creatures, big creatures. Yeah, we can choose the mode that works best for us. Hour of Reckoning, Convoke, and also destroy all non-token creatures. So yeah, all of our tokens are going to stay in play. Our commander probably is going to be crude when we cast this, so uh, it's going to stay in play as well. Our opponent's creatures are going to be decimated, and we're going to swing right through on them. Next up, we've got some ways to protect our own plan or to stop our opponents from doing their plan. Counterspell. Yeah, very simply. Counter target spell, negate, counter a non-creature spell, and dispel counter an instant spell each of these can be very effective in many situations speaking of which blacksmith skill and lauren's escape can really help us out protecting one of our own things blacksmith skill says target permanent gains hexproof and disrupt live turn and if it's an artifact creature plus two plus two so yeah this can be a great surprise way to give our commander some extra power and maybe just have it have the finishing blow on an opponent lauren's escape target artifact creature gains hexproof and a disrupt live turn as well scry one so some extra card selection from this one as well on top of being a great one man away to protect, well, pretty much anything we need to. But now that we've talked about every single non-land card in this deck, let's quickly talk about the lands. Command Tower can tap for either of our colors. Exotic Worcher can do so most of the time. And Ash Barons, basic land cycled away for a basic land. Moving on, Evolving Guild, Simmer Expanse, sacrifice them, go get a basic into play tapped. Speaking of which, Broker's Hide of Obscure Storefront. Each of which into the battlefield are sacrificed. We will get a planes or island, put it into play tapped, then shuffle and gain one life. Next up, we've got Mirror Landscape, which can help ramp us. Rogue's Passage, which can help us get our commander through. Or I guess any other creature, but still, yeah, our commander, a lot of power coming through there. Then we've got Port Town, which can enter the battlefield untapped if we meet the requirement. Sky Cloud Escape, which has a filter mechanic on it. Can add our colors. Azorius Chantry, which is our bounce land. 
Moving on, we've got Temple of Enlightenment. Entrance Battlefield tapped. It's going to have a Scry 1. Tranquil Cove. Entrance Battlefield tapped as well. Has this gain 1 life. And so does Sajiri Refuge. And then we're going to be rounding out this deck, of course, with a lot of basic lands, islands, and planes. But now that we've talked about every single card in this deck, let's talk about the price. And again, like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, every single card in this deck, except for the commander, which is right over $1, every other card in the 99 is less than $1. So it's a very budget-friendly deck with an estimated cost of just $31.40. And also, keep in mind, if you already have the basic lands, there's some extra savings for you there because those basics are included that it's made cost at 10 cents a piece. And uh, also speaking of potential extra savings, you might be able to save even more by buying this deck on TCG player and utilizing heavily played and damaged cards, which of course need a home too. Though do keep in mind this estimated cost does not include the cost of shipping, which might vary depending upon where you live. And with that, today's episode is coming to a close. So yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on it in the comments below. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. 